Conte, you mentioned in your testimony um, that statues of Christopher Columbus are being targeted by protesters, and you you mentioned the statues of Columbus along with um, George Washington. And uh, so it, it seemingly as if those statues should remain untouchable. And, and I wanna tell you why protesters are targeting statues of Christopher Columbus. I'm a 35th generation New Mexican. Christopher Columbus murdered thousands of indigenous people when he came over to this part of the world. And he opened the door for Europe to come and colonize this continent when, when millions of indigenous people had lived here since time immemorial. They brought disease, they brought uh, violence and oppression and genocide. This country is founded on genocide, which in my opinion, uh, I have a minor in history, certainly not a major, uh, which is a precursor to how they would treat the slaves when they brought Africans over here to uh, work and make people rich. And so I just want to, uh, to say that because I couldn't let this hearing go by without mentioning that. So thank you. Um, and Ms. Coleman, my question is for you. Although the bills included in today's hearing focus on the commemorative works glorifying Confederate leaders who champion the continued enslavement and brutalization of black Americans, there are countless other places throughout the nation that bear the names of individuals responsible for committing horrific atrocities. Ms. Coleman, based on your research, would you say that offensive or derogatory place names and sites is a larger issue that goes beyond Confederate statues? Yes, the simple answer is yes, I do. Um, as you just mentioned about Columbus and others, um, there is um, a horrific past there. Uh, I am appreciative of our need to know all of these things. What, what disturbs me the most in these conversations is when people say that the removal of these objects is somehow taking away the history. Um, we know that King George III was king of the, these 13 colonies before the American Revolution. Every single statue of him was taken down by the people, not a deliberative process. Our nation was born out of civil and social unrest at sometimes turning into protest and damage of property, nay, the Boston Tea Party. So what, what I think um, becomes important for us to understand is that we have to be mindful as we look forward and as we look back on the past to determine, again, which values we want to set forward. We are not going to forget the atrocities. We can't. But when we, when we venerate figures who are responsible for those atrocities, that in, in and of itself is an erasure. Um, I, I will say that I may be alone in this, but there are individuals that I do believe even in their imperfect selves. And this isn't about presentism, this is about the realities that there are individuals that um, gave us founding language of being a better place, of having a, a more perfect union that we can cling to, even if they did not. So um, again, I think it, it, it is incumbent upon communities to make these decisions for themselves and where deliberative processes can take place that they do. But I also am keenly aware as a person in public history that communities often disenfranchise voices. They only pick people that they wanna hear from. So we have to be careful of that too. Ms. Coleman, in your opinion, what should Congress's role be in addressing this issue? In other words, how should we be thinking about this issue uh, programmatic programmatically? Well, I think first and foremost, you gotta understand what you have. And, and once you understand what you have, then you can begin the process of which of these things best align. I do think that the battlefields are a little different um, because they do have figures for all sides. What is often missing from those battlefields, however, is any representation of the 200,000 plus African-American men who served. What's also missing is the 16 different native nations that aligned with the United States against the Confederacy. Those things are missing. So that's where I think the additive role becomes more important. 
Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Coleman. And